come to Monday, 7th of uh, December 2020. This is 192nd session of the morning devotion. We are taking our hymn from 229. Tell it to Jesus. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving? Over joys departed, tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You have no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears flow down your cheeks on the din? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Have you sins that no man eyes are hidden? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He's a friend that's well known. You have no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious what shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He's our friend that's well known. You have no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. For Christ coming, kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus. Jesus alone, tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, he is a friend that's well known, you have no other such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. We want to come before the Lord this uh, Monday to thank Him. From this songwriter, there is nothing too big to tell God. There is nothing too small to tell God. And needless becoming weary, needless becoming heavy-hearted, needless becoming tired. He said, if you are weary and you are heavy-hearted, now tell it Jesus. If you are grieving because you lost somebody, tell it to Jesus. So let's come this morning to tell Jesus about our lives and uh, to thank him and ask him to take over. Our God, we thank you because of the encouragement we've received this morning from this song. Asking us, are you weary? It is not the songwriter, but God is the one asking me this question and asking every person this question this morning. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? He said, we should tell it to him. Now, he said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. So this morning we've come to appreciate God Almighty who took us through the night hours and brought us into a new day. And into a new week, a very new week, a week full of expectation, a week we're expecting that uh, what uh, the Lord will do 
For one week we do it in one day. We are trusting God Almighty. A week to make the sun, uh, the, 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 the light of the moon to be like the, the light of the sun. And the light of the sun for one day to be like the sun, light of the sun for seven days. A week of action. A week of uh, intervention. A week of uh, quick succession of miracles. A week of the Lord stepping into the arena and showing himself strong and granting miracles and favor that will make the people great father to feel that uh, they, they have served God not in vain. I bless God Almighty because I know that uh, all the hands that have been weary, all the people that are discouraged, all the people that are tired, all the people that are fed up, all the people that have lost interest in prayer, interest in following God, interest in things of God, my Father, that uh, as we sit down and listen briefly to God, we shall renew our strength. Interest shall be renewed. Sea shall be renewed. And we will take back our fire. We shall be on the firing line for God. We bless God Almighty in Jesus' name. Amen. The discourse of this morning is entitled, Do not be, be tired. Don't be weary. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Now we are taking our... Uh, our Anchor scripture from uh, Luke chapter 18, a parable of Christ, reading from verse 1. He speak a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He went on in verse 2 to give the parable, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearied me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on edge. Now, this parable was given by Jesus to encourage men not to faint, to encourage men not to give up, to encourage men to pray, to encourage men not to uh, get discouraged, so that uh, to encourage men to continue to be to persevere and uh, to teach importunity in prayer and a never give up spirit to teach men to be resilient in what they do and uh, i'm trusting god almighty that, uh, that what jesus intended to achieve with this in the minds of his uh, uh, immediate uh, followers the followers who he addressed the directly that the same will be achieved even through this in our lives this morning now these days are last days and these last days are days of uh, so many discouraging things happening discouraging voices discouraging things happening within the church and without the church the news we hear every day about what people do in church what pastors do what prophets do are uh, not uh, encouraging news and what is happening outside the world there is not equally encouraging. Everything is all discouraging, tiresome, wearisome, and uh, that is capable of making people to faint in their minds. In Deuteronomy 1 verse 28, Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, A people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and wall up to heaven. Moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakins there. Brethren can discourage. Now in the days of Moses and the children of Israel, the discouragement came from within. Within. Numbers 13, 27 to 33, find that the, what discouraged the people and made the people in chapter 14, the whole assembly to weep was, it was caused by officers, leaders of the people brought the weakness and discouragement and tiredness, uh, tiresomeness to the people. So then you find that, that uh, 
it has a lesson for all of us those that are leaders and members of the church that we must be careful so that our activities our ways and our ways do not uh, turn out to become an uh, instrument of getting making people to become tired and become discouraged and lose interest in things of god now there are many hands that are hanging down there are many people that are weary and god we have these hands that are hanging down to be lifted up as we draw closer to the end of the time. As we draw closer to the appearance of Jesus and things are getting, um, uh, things are getting bad by the day. Chapter 12 of uh, Hebrews 11 to 13. Hebrew chapter 12, let's read 11 to 13. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous or grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is left be turned out of the way, but let it rather be hid. This is encouraging us to pick up, don't be discouraged. There is a chorus we used to sing, I will never be tired. God wants you to keep singing it and let the weak say they are strong. And so, every believer is admonished by the Lord not to be weary, not to be tired in his heart. Now, there are many areas God wants us not to be tired. He wants us not to be tired in doing good. He wants us not be to, to be uh, weary in our heart. He wants us not to be tired in fighting the enemy. Now, in First Samuel chapter 17, 30 to 32, David said unto the tired and wearied and discouraged and the uh, people, the army of Israel led by Saul that had already were at the verge of giving up that no man's heart should faint. So God wants us not to faint. Jesus said men ought always to pray and not to faint. So don't faint. Don't be weary. Don't collapse. Now, a heart can be collapsed. There are many things that can collapse the mind. One can become tired of doing good because of the attitude of the brethren. But in Galatians chapter 6, from verse 6 to 10, God said, don't be weary in do well doing because in due time if you do not faint you will receive a reward don't be tired in well doing because if you don't faint you will receive a reward now let's read verse 9 of um, of uh, galatians chapter 6 let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, if we don't get worried, if we don't get discouraged, he says shortly, we shall start reaping. I'm trusting God that uh, as we continue pressing on and pushing on, we will get to a point where we will uh, get, uh, 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 we will begin to recover the lost. So, battles uh, and uh, uh, we, we, we battles are lost through becoming tired when you get tired you will lose battle possessing what belongs to somebody is lost when people get tired people lose purpose when they get tired when they get faint that genesis 25 29 and 30 uh, Esau gave up his birthright because he was becoming weary. He became so tired and was fainting. And he said, what is this uh, birthright? What is this birthright to me? And I'm fainting and I'm dying. Genesis 25, 29. And Jacob sought pottage. And Esau came from the field. And he was faint. He was tired. He was weary. Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, wait that same red porridge, for I am faint, I'm tired, I'm weak, I am weak. Therefore was his name called Edom, and Jacob pled in. Jacob took advantage of his tiredness, took advantage of his weariness, took advantage of his weakness, and then 
and uh, supplanted him. So you find that that people lose purpose when they become tired, when they become weary, when they faint. Fear brings discouragement and uh, and weariness. When there is fear, people get discouraged. Fear also makes people to get weary. That is why the Word of God warns us that uh, we should not fear. Fear not. In Joshua chapter 1, 5 to 9, God speaking about we not to lose courage and then and we not to fear. Judges chapter 2 verse 9. Sorry, Joshua chapter 2 verse 9, please. Joshua chapter 2. Can we read verse 9? And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us. Fear, your fear is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. What brought that faint was fear. All the people are afraid of you, and so our hands have become weak. 24 And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord had delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. They became weary, they became tired, and things began to drop from their hands because of uh, fear. So, lack of spiritual refreshing and uh, renewal. Uh, constantly with the truth and uh, uh, with the truth weakens and wearies and frustrates the believer a believer that is walking and walking and ministering and preaching and praying no spiritual refreshing no physical refreshing no uh, spiritual renewal no personal retreat from time to time now that we leave a person a believer empty now we leave a believer frustrated that we leave a believer siphon that we leave a believer uh, weak and weary and then and discourage isaiah chapter 44 and verse 12. isaiah chapter 44 let us read verse 12. 44 verse 12. The smith with the tongues both walketh in the coals, and fashioned it with hammer, and walketh it with the strength of his arm. Yea, he is hungry, and then his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and is faint. Can you see? When people are hungry, when you are giving out, and you are not feeding yourself spiritually, surely your strength will fail. When you are giving water, people waters of life and you are not drinking water yourself you will faint so when we our attentions are focused on others and we neglect ourselves we will soon become tired we will soon become weary we will soon get into mechanical doing of things in lamentation chapter 2 verse 19 lamentation chapter 2 and verse 19 Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up your hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Hunger, spiritual hunger, makes people to faint. Physical hunger also, when somebody is laboring and labored and labored and labored and labored, labored empties to mock, and then and there is nothing also to eat at the end. That person is at the point of getting frustrated and getting weary. And so that is why it is important that people that are ministering to people, ministers of God ministering to the people, the people should know how to take care of their ministers, how to minister to their ministers so that the minister can have strength a minister that is ministering and there is no food to eat is waiting upon God 40 days and then at the end no good food to eat. After all the ministration, after all the fasting, he finds out that he will come out empty, he will come out dry. And if he continues like that, soon he will become tired. We know that a point came in the life of um, uh, 
Elijah, and Elijah became tired and became weary. Even Moses also became tired and became weary of uh, ministering to the people. I was asking the Lord to take his life because the people were not encouraging him. Now in Amos chapter 8, and let us read verse 13. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. That is that when people are hungry, they can faint. Matthew 15, 32, and Mark chapter 8, verse 3. All of this show that when people are not, uh, when people are not refreshing, this refreshing, not only spiritual refreshing, but physical refreshing, resting your mind, resting the body, you find out that soon the people will get tired. Many people backslide during the time when there is a spiritual uh, uh, lack and even material lacks that will lead them to weariness. Now adversity in life and sorrow, they cause spiritual weariness and they also make people to become tired spiritually. Proverbs 24 verse 10, if you faint in the day of adversity, it is because your strength is small. First King chapter 19, 1 to 4, we see Elijah becoming tired and even praying that he should be killed. So the pursuit of enemies also can cause somebody to become weary after you have done a great work, after you have done a great exploit. If there is no backup, that is why people should learn how to pray for their ministers and not how to criticize them, how to support their ministers. And uh, that is uh, it. Now I find that Elijah was ministering, there was no support. And then at the point when he needed the support of the people because there was nobody to support him, he became weary and began to tell the Lord to kill him because he was not better than his people. The same thing also happened to Moses. Moses also was ministering and there was no support. After a great exploit done by Samson, and, uh, and he became thirsty and was fainting. It was when God granted him a miracle that gave him water to drink that he was revived. So that is why the Bible says that after you take the whole more of God, that after you have fought the battle and won, you may stand. So we can become weary after we have uh, done great exploit, after great outing. One can become weary and tired and discouraged if there are no people supporting him. Moses at a point, because of a lot of work, a lot of load, he became weary, his hand was going down. But thank God for Aaron and all. They were there not to criticize but to support him. And through their support, his hand was supported. And then a victory came for God's people. And so this is not the time of people criticizing one another, criticizing their ministers, trying to find fault. It is a time to support one another because of so many weary, weary sentences happening, so many discouraging things happening, so many things happening capable of making people to give up. Now, the weary and tired scent sense can be revived and renewed and that is through waiting upon God through resting their body resting their mind through eating good food as the case may be those who wait upon God they shall renew their strength Isaiah chapter 40 26 to 31 and so some people need rest for eyes for Elijah to be restored he needed God to put him into sleep after he has slept. He gave him uh, a sleep therapy as well as food therapy. Sleep therapy and food therapy was what recovered him. And then the voice of God came also to restore him. So sometimes uh, we need rest. We need sleep. We need food. We need a quiet place to get refreshed if we will not break down completely physically and spiritually so through hearing good news of the lord's doing also uh, a tired person can be restored strength can come that was exactly what happened in the case of uh, jacob when the news that joseph was alive got to him he was renewed 
that news brought refreshing that news brought strength strengthening unto him so it is important that uh, we be men who carry good news we be men who tread on good news there are people that are champions of uh, bad news champion of discouraging words sanction champion of uh, words of uh, stories that we make somebody who has labored and labored and labored and then that we need rest and then he gets back to the house in the night what is being told is uh, so, so, so stories that uh, will uh, disorganize the person now we find that that uh, we can help one another by ensuring that uh, we bring good news good thing you have read in the bible you can share it with your husband you can share it with your wife you can share it with your father you can share it with your children you can share it with people around you with your friends you have god has spoken something god have you are praying for the person and you have god saying something good about the person you call the person send it they tell the person this is what god said that will go a long way to be an encouragement now there are other causes of uh, of uh, weariness and uh, tiresomeness and they include the um, uh, troubles of life and unbelief and bad news as we have seen earlier and uh, loss of confidence and loss of assurance and negative and discouraging attitude of people who have benefited from ministers yes now when people are benefited from a minister and they are showing negative attitude discouraging attitude that goes a long way to make the minister to become tired and begin to think if he has made a wrong choice in accepting to be to serve god and to stand in for the people job chapter 4 and verse 5 job chapter 4 and verse 5 but now it is come upon thee and thou fainted. He touched thee and thou art trouble. These were people that supposed to be comforters. They came talking to Job and they turned out to become miserable comforters. Job addressed them as miserable comforters because they were there to accuse Job. They were there to attack Job. They were there to say things that uh, rather than encouraging Job, rather than helping his mind to survive the trouble that came upon him they were killing job from the inside psalm 27 and verse 13 i had fainted unless i had believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living belief and faith is uh, necessary to make a person to get back to to recover so now in verse 14 wait on the lord be of good courage and it shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So we can wait upon God. That also can strengthen our heart and make us to move on. So when we minister without personal retreat and without personally refilling ourselves, that can also lead to physical collapse and spiritual collapse, breakdown of our health. It can lead to spiritual bankruptcy and even physical uh, draining of our lives and that is dangerous so we must learn to to we must learn to minister to us and we must learn to a personal retreat uh, judges chapter 8 1 to 5 songs of solomon 1 4 to 8 first samuel 14 28 to 31 and chapter 30 10 and 21 let's read first samuel 30 10 and 21 to see what uh, the lord is saying in the matter of uh, ministering and there is no personal uh, uh, retreat no personal refilling how it can lead to a spiritual collapse first somewhere chapter 30 verse 10 30 and verse 10 but david pursued and the 400 men for 200 are both behind which were so faint that they could not go over the brook vessel they were walking and walking and walking and walking no time of resting so at the point 200 collapsed completely verse 21 and david came to the 200 men which were so faint that they could not follow david whom they had made also to abide at the brook vessel and they went forth to meet david and to meet the people that were with him and when david came near to the people they saluted uh, he saluted them these discouraged people david saluted them 
and encourage them. So then you find that that walking and walking and walking, no eating, no no feeding of the self can collapse. In first Samuel 14, 28 and 31, the people that Saul sent to battle, he said they shouldn't eat. And the people were worried and tired. And uh, in fact, if not for God's intervention, they would have lost the battle. So walking for God without deep knowledge of who you are working for is another thing that can make somebody to easily get uh, worried you are working for god but you don't know the god you are working you can easily get worried paul said i know whom i believed and david said unto the people let no man's heart fail because and when they tried to uh, say something uh, david went on to encourage them that uh, they should not go that way. They should not faint. When people faint, they feel weak. They feel tired and weary. They feel dizzy and uh, uh, near losing consciousness. So, so to faint is to get weak, to get tired, to get weary. Now, to get tired and weary and faint is to lack conviction. You are lo lacking conviction now. No more enthusiasm. And you have become feeble. Many people are doing the work of God. No more, no more uh, conviction. No more with enthusiasm. And they have become feeble. They are, they have, uh, they are too tired. They are no more. Uh, the work of God is no longer a, a delight. The work of God is no longer uh, enjoyed. That is, uh, the, that is being faint. That is being weary. So. Somebody can be at the work, but he's already out of the work. And uh, Jeremiah 49 and verse 23. So you need to ask yourself, am I uh, enthusiastic as I, I used to be? Um, my conviction on are there still strong? My interest in the work, my zeal, uh, my still maintaining it. Uh, Jeremiah 49 verse 23. Concerning Damascus, Hamad is confounded and apart. For they have had evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Faint-hearted. Tidings. Evil tidings brought faint-heartedness. No more zeal. So Isaiah chapter 7 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 4. And say unto him, Take heed and be quiet. Fear not. Neither be faint-hearted. For the two tails of this smoking tire, uh, fire brands. For the fierce anger of raising with Syria, uh, Syria, and of the son of Ramelea. So you need to find out whether you are faint-hearted. Your heart is no longer gripping strongly on the world, or whether your heart is still strongly. The interest is it still strong as it used to be, or uh, a number of things happening around you have made you to lose interest in prayer, interest in the vision, interest in the movement. Do you know that somebody can be in the movement, but interest has been lost in the movement? Maybe because you feel things are not going the way you want it to go. You can lose interest and then lose your vision. Deuteronomy 28 and verse uh, 20, rather. Uh, Deuteronomy 20, verse 8. And officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is dear that is fearful and faint hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren. Uh, heart faint as well as his own heart. So then you find that uh, tiredness can be transferred, weakness can be transferred. That is why it is important that when somebody is a leader, he must not allow his any discouragement, whether hidden or uh, public, because since he's a public figure, his uh, weariness, his tiredness can affect others. Now Deuteronomy 28 say that if somebody is faint-hearted, he should return because he can affect, he can, he can transfer, he can transfer faint-heartedness, tiredness, weakness, loss of interest to the rest of others. So how do we regain spiritual strength and conviction and then um, consciousness and courage? For us to regain this we've mentioned, it requires that we should listen to appropriate persons. We should read appropriate books. We should listen to appropriate songs. We should associate with correct people. That is the word of God. 
the people of Nehemiah, Nehemiah was uh, an encouragement to the people that were discouraged. Immediately noted discouragement, he gathered them and began to fire them back. And then the uh, the the Amobiara of uh, Amobiara of uh, Jonathan was of the same mind and the appropriate person to listen to. Daniel gained understanding and encouragement from books. So when we read right books, when we listen to right persons, when we associate with right persons and listen to appropriate songs, we will be encouraged. We will be encouraged. And so the Bible and the, the fire of the Spirit of God are there equally to restore hope and build courage and build conviction. In Ezekiel 37, what happened at the valley was that Ezekiel came and Ezekiel didn't know what to do. He waited for God to tell him what to do. And when God gave him instruction on what to do, he made sure that he said everything that should be said to the dry bones. He did not speak his mind. He, he spoke the correct words. Now, if Ezekiel had begun to say what he liked to those dry bones, he will leave them dry. Many of us have met people dry, met people dry, and we met dry people and we left them drier. We met discouraged people. After talking to them, we get them more discouraged. We met people that uh, have, are losing interest in the vision of what we are doing. And after we finish talking to them, we make them to lose more interest. But not for Ezekiel. Ezekiel waited for God to speak. And all the things he spoke and said to the dry bones were encouragement. So those of us in leadership position, we must learn how to say what God wants us to say. We must learn how to give hope, restore hope, and not to destroy hope. We must learn how to build courage and conviction and not to destroy the little interest and courage remaining in the people working with us. The dry bones had the correct word, yes, that moved them to gather together for the Spirit of God to put them back to use. So let's speak correct words, those of us in leadership. Let us learn how to correct people. There are, if you take up somebody that is full of problem and you begin to rebuke the person, you chastise the person, you rebuke the person. He's full of problem. He's already discouraged. You are not helping the issue. Rather than helping the issue, you are destroying the issue. This is the mistake of many people in leadership. They think that by encouraging the people, they are becoming weak. There are people that do not know how to speak to the people. They always want to uh, assert authority. They always want to, to speak too hard. Never encourage the people. They never have word of encouragement. They are always placing demand and demand. Can you imagine Ezekiel placing a demand from the dry bones? What the dry bones needed to, to raise a mighty army was an encouraging word. So, those of us in leadership position, those of us who talk to others, we must learn how to speak words to the weary in time. Isaiah 50 said, You waken at me morning by morning, verse 4, so I can learn how to speak to the weary. Let us see that. Do you know how to speak to the weary and get them back to refreshing? Or your words are wearying the weary more and more. If you do not wait for God to speak to you, you'll find out that your words will be getting the people more discouraged and more worried. Psalm, Isaiah chapter 50, rather verse 4. The Lord God had given me the tongue of the learned. I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Many people in the church are weary this time. So, pastor, learn how to speak to the weary congregation. He wakened morning by morning. He wakened my ear to hear as the learned. Why do we weary people that are already worried? It is because we don't wait for God to speak before we start speaking. If we wait for God to speak, we will have result. Like uh, Ezekiel had. 
so then brothers and sisters god almighty we want us to learn when we walk and associate with uh, men who believe in god who are courageous who see invisible that also will help us to regain strength when you associate with people who will uh, encourage you who will uh, who who uh, will uh, improve your value and not people who will tell you you are nobody you are a, a good for nothing you are a do no well when you listen to such people you destroy yourself so we must learn to uh, talk to people that associate with us encouraging word and we must learn to associate with people that see the invisible people who have faith in god now in second kings chapter 6 starting to 17 the servant of elisha was a panicking but his master was a deep spiritual man he encouraged him and prayed for his eye to open now in hebrew 11 24 to 27 moses is described there as a man who saw invisible the armor bearer of uh, Jonathan was an encouragement to him. He saw he was a man who see the way he was seeing. Now, so the place of uh, also associating and working with experienced men, experienced teacher, experienced pastor, experienced mentor is very important, very strategic in molding your character, in shaping your life, your vision, and encouraging you even in your life people you associate with will either mar you or make you now so for apostle 4 13 the people who associated with jesus the people saw them that they are born with christ matthew 4 18 to 22 come unto me jesus christ said and i will uh, i will make you fishers of men and they were made so who you associate with will either make you or mind you make you good or make you bad second chronicle 15 6 to 9 second chronicle chapter 6 5, chapter 15 6 to 9 chapter 15 let us read verse 6 to 9 a nation was destroyed of nation a city of city for god did vex them with all adversary be strong therefore and let not your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. This is an encouragement. And when I heard this words, and the prophecy of death, the prophet, he took courage. Prophecy he had gave him courage and put away abominable idols out of the land of Judah. So the words we speak, the words we listen, can either make us to get more discouraged and the uh, get more established in evil or depart from evil listening to people who make you look stupid who make you look as good for nothing who make you look worthless who devalue your life who make you lose your identity and personality and lose your confidence and self-value and uh, make you to become inferior is dangerous of course we know that inferiority complex is worst enemy of destiny and accomplishment so don't listen to those who make you to look stupid don't listen to those who make you to look worthless don't listen to those who feel they are the only people that are valuable and then you are invaluable don't listen to any person that makes you to lose self-value self-esteem self-confidence who make you to lose your identity and make you put on false identity and so in the email chapter four one to five the people looked at the people and said what do these feeble jews they want them to lose their identity but nehemiah will not accept that so then this is important don't listen to people that do so to you to regain your courage also and uh, you need to pray you need to fight you need to advance god's vision and purpose for your life then you you need to listen to men who will help you build your confidence restore your hope restore your self-esteem also discover your identity in god listen to people 
that will help you discover your identity in God. So, brothers and sisters, you need to regain courage. You need to regain your prayer life. You need to regain strength to fight battle again and advance God's vision. And uh, you need to regain uh, grace to pursue the purpose of God for your life. But for that to happen, who you listen to will help build your life or destroy your life. Who you listen to will help build your confidence or destroy your confidence. I want you to choose to listen to men who have the truth that will help you gain self-esteem and discover your identity in God and uh, not men that uh, after they finish talking to you you will uh, even be losing what you have let us pray our god we thank you this morning what a revelation what an encouragement my father what a lesson that the dry bones were not left dry some other person would have been brought into that uh, uh, situation and then you will leave the people drier because of uh, being too fast to talk and do things but not for Ezekiel my God and my Father I want to ask for the anointing of Ezekiel, great father, that enabled him to have wisdom on the things to say and say those things that left the people that were dry, mighty army. Lord, I'm asking for anointing, O oh God, and wisdom and faith to turn dry uh, bones to become army ready to fight for God put it upon me and upon your church in the name of Jesus Amen I want us to pray for a renewal of your strength a renewal of your courage a renewal of the grace of God upon your life Father we thank you this morning as we come before God asking for a renewal of strength a renewal of courage, a renewal of God's grace upon our lives. We thank you, Almighty Father, because our grace, the grace of God and strength of God and everything we need, we receive renewal from God's hand this morning. We appreciate you for what you have done in Jesus' name. I want us to pray for deliverance from false identity that have had by adverse circumstances false identity false value that the circumstances adverse have imposed on you like they did on Gideon Gideon was a man of valor but circumstances adverse made him to lose it until an angel came speaking to him opening his eyes to discover his identity Father, we come this morning praying all the force and identity and circumstances that have imposed them in our lives. Make us to lose our what? Make us to lose our, our, our personality and our identity and put on our confidence and our value. And now many of us are having inferiority complex. Great Father in heaven. I want to ask Lord that uh, it is time Lord that you help us Lord to engage ourselves in correct things read correct listen to correct persons and uh, read appropriate books listen to appropriate songs and have a correct association my father that will restore the values of those who have lost their value personal value I want to thank you almighty father in the name of Jesus the dry bones were not told they were dry. They were not told they were useless. Even though they were told they were dry, they were not told they were useless. They were not told they were good for nothing. They were told. They were given hope. I want you to pray that God will pour His Spirit upon you so that you will give hope to people who come around you. Father, you've given us a ministry of hope. The ministry of the watchman is not 
It's a ministry that gives men hope. It's a ministry of that liberates men. It's a ministry that adds value to men. It is a ministry, not a ministry that devalues men. It is a ministry that builds person, men, uh, builds men identity and personality and give assurance and confidence. I want to ask Lord in glory that as people will come in contact with us, no matter how dry and how empty these people may be, oh Lord, I'm praying that contact with us, we put them back to use and back to effect in Jesus' name. We need wisdom to avoid men whose words make us to develop poor and low self-esteem. An inferiority complex. Father, give your people wisdom to avoid listening to men that their words make them, Father, to develop poor surface gym and develop inferiority complex and lose their word. Great Father in heaven, I want to ask Lord, give us wisdom to avoid tactfully listening to such people, association with such people. In Jesus' name, ask God to, to strengthen all those saints that are worried, all the saints that are tired in the church. Let God strengthen them. Let God encourage them. I want to bring all the people that are worried and discouraged and tired Blessed Redeemer, all the saints, tired saints in church. Lord, I'm praying, O oh God, that your hand will rest upon them, your grace will rest upon them. I want to pray for myself and all my ministers working with me and all the watchmen that you give us wisdom and courage and understanding to know how to speak to weary souls. Many people are worried, Father, and we do not need to add weary to to those that already wear it. Rather, give us grace to, on how to navigate them out of their troubles. I want to thank you, Father. Help us to be solution to people that are in trouble. Glory be to God in Jesus' name. Pray for those who are at the point of giving up hope because of miserable uh, teachers around them and because of uh, adverse circumstances, that they should encounter hope again. This morning we come, Father, there is hope. God is the God of hope, who weighs actions. I want to thank you, blessed Father. I bring all the people that, because of the people ministering to them, who we can say they are miserable teachers, who great father in heaven will not see anything good in such people i pray lord this morning that you bring them to encounter hope again from the word they have had this morning almighty father i pray that those who are discouraged help them out of discouragement blessed be god forever we want to move out today with great courage we want to see a great things happening this week as we see oh god the month coming to a close and the year coming to a close. Father, we want intervention that will bring encouragement. The people of uh, Elijah there were so discouraged that they now went into idolatry. When the sun fire came, they got revived. Their faith in God was repaired. Lord, I'm asking, repair the faith of your people. Circumstances have done great damage. So much damage has been done in their personal relationship of their people with you, in their private life, so many damages have been done. We cannot pretend not to know. Our Lord, I'm asking that by virtue of your oppression and your work, you heal. Many people have been wounded in the church, even by our hands, by those who are supposed to heal their wounds, who succeeded in afflicting and inflicting many people Father, I want to ask, Lord, for your healing to all the people. Thank you in Jesus' name. Finally, we pray for our daddies and our mommies and our beloved daddy, the man of God, that uh, like Moses, 
and others that God Almighty will strengthen all of them. Ask God to take you out today. Ask God that this week you want to see more of his goodness and mercy. Our Father, we thank you this morning. As we look up to heaven, we are trusting, O oh God, that we should see your message this week as you hand rest upon our daddies and our mommies and our Father in the Lord, the man of God. You will strengthen him like you strengthen Moses, Elijah, and the rest of the people who, in the midst of opposition, were able to fulfill their ministry. Lord, I pray that all dry bones that listen to the man of God and will listen to us this week, all of them will come back refreshed, will come out a mighty army. Give us wisdom and grace to make army, mighty army from dry bones and not to make uh, mighty army dry bones. Lord, I thank you for answer in Jesus' name. Help us not to be people that living people, people that are alive will die at their hands. Uh, make up people that when men are dead and they bring them to us, we bring them back to life. We will resurrect them spiritually. Thank you, our Father. We will speak words that uh, they will hear and their life will come back again and hope will uh, come back again in them. This is what I want you to make us. Make me to be such a man and make all the people praying with me, great Father, who desire to be this, to be that. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name, We've prayed. Amen. Let's sing him 232. We take a two stanzas. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a sheep upon the sea, thou who rulest wind and water. Stand by me in the midst of tribulation. Stand by me in the midst of tribulation. Stand by me when the hose of hell ascend and my strength begin to fail. Thou who never lost a battle, stand by me. Stand by me. Let us uh, share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.